Hey everyone, in this video, I am going to look into Lenovo's best selling model, the IdeaPad 310 Notebook. This model is priced and placed little higher than Lenovo's entry level IdeaPad 110 series. The IP310 is primarily focused on first time laptop buyers, home and casual users, whose usage is mostly limited to watching videos, surfing web, editing documents, and other less demanding daily needs. Let's find out how this laptop fares for such category users. The IP310 comes in plenty of variants distinguished by processor model, GPU and screen resolution. And the one which I am looking now is based on Intel i3 CPU with HD graphics. Here is the complete specification of my review unit. Like with other most budget laptops, the IdeaPad 310's entire chassis is built using solid plastic with non-reflecting surface. The top lid is done with nice matte finish and bottom portion as a rough textured coating and brushed metal finish around the trackpad and keyboard area. The Lenovo 310 is available in 5 different shades, smooth or textured black, silver, red, purple and white. My model is completely black in color with smooth surface on it. The laptop doesn't carry any fancy elements and it follows minimalistic design overall, clearly reminding us about the price point of this model. Body quality feels solid while lifting the notebook, but fit and finish is quite average on this model. I noticed few panel gaps around the keyboard frame and the DVD drive is bit wobbly and top corners of the display feels very flimsy to touch. I wish the build quality could have been a little better, but it is still superior than the IdeaPad 110 model. The top lid cover is reasonably rigid and doesn't bend inside much when applying slight pressure. The laptop attracts fingerprints quite easily especially on top lid and trackpad area despite having a non-glossy surface. It has a single inch design and is sturdy enough to hold the display at all angles but the screen bounces a lot while tilting. There are 4 rubber foots at all corners of the brace spot with rear ones being raised little higher to ease typing comfort. The laptop weighs about 2.2 kilos which is slightly lesser than a standard 15.6 inch notebook but it appears little bulky while viewing from side angles. Lenovo includes all the essential IO ports with the IdeaPad 310 series and you are well served with sufficient amount of USB ports distributed on both sides of the laptop. On the left, a round shaped charging connector, a small LED light that glows while charging, VJ out which most laptops lacks nowadays, a recessed ethernet jack, a full sized HDMI out, a single USB 3.0 slot, 3.5mm audio jack, a tiny pin hole recovery button to restore the laptop to factory default in case if the laptop fails to boot and finally a SD card reader slot. There is adequate space between the USB slots so you can connect two USB devices simultaneously without blocking the adjacent slot. And this was not the case with IdeaPad 110 model. As you can see, the adjacent port is completely blocked when a larger sized USB device is inserted in the first slot. Above the screen, a low resolution webcam and a microphone. The webcam quality is very average and output is heavily pixelated even in bright light conditions. The keyboard layout is decent and the keys are average in size with sufficient space between each other. The key travel distance is very short and offer little resistance when pressed which affects the overall feedback. I wish little more travel depth would have resulted in more comfortable typing experience. The keyboard area doesn't flex inside much even while typing aggressively which is a good sign of overall build quality. The most frequently used keys tap, shift, enter and backspace buttons are large enough to differentiate from other keys. Lenovo provides numlock and caps lock LED indicators on this model. The directional keys are not separated from alphabetic and numeric section which is annoying sometimes and misleads me eating adjacent keys instead of up arrow. Also I expect a little more gap between the numpad and alphanumeric section would be more convenient. Overall, the typing experience on this model is very good and far better than the IdeaPad 110 keyboard. Touchpad area is medium sized and supports multi gesture functions. You can also customize gesture controls using this Synaptics tool. My only concern is the trackpad dimension which is quite small for a 15.6 inch notebook. 
Very often my fingers cross the borderline when my eyes are busy reading on the screen. Other than this, the trackpad gave precise feedback in my entire usage. Lenovo has employed stereo speakers for this model placed at the bottom part and the intensity is not that loud but the sound quality is pretty amazing producing plenty of details while listening to music and watching videos. You can also customize the audio output using this pre-installed Dolby interface. Like with most entry-level notebooks, Lenovo IP310 uses a glossy TN display panel and has a resolution of 1366 by 768. You also have the option of enjoying full HD display panel by spending little extra money on the same 310 model. The display is not too bright and the reflective screen surface leaves us struggling to read under harsh lighting conditions, especially when the screen facing a bright window. The color temperature is spot on, the screen doesn't exhibit bluish tint and whites appear white. Due to TN panel technology, color reproduction will not be accurate on this laptop and not suitable for any color critical tasks such as editing photos and videos. As you can see, the images look washed out compared to the IPS screen on the left side. Make sure you watch this scene in an IPS or VA grade display to spot the difference. The viewing angle stability is affected after tilting the screen to extreme position and viewing from the sides gives a negative shade of the image, which is the major drawback of using a TN panel. The color shift is highly noticeable when tilting the screen vertically. This Lenovo display does not use PWM method across all brightness levels and as a result there will be no flickering issue on this screen. You can notice the screen flickering on the reference laptop that uses pulse width modulation method to control brightness. So people can enjoy less eye strain with the IdeaPad 310 notebook. 1366 by 768 resolution on a 15.6 inches screen yields a pixel density of around 100 pixels per inch and text remains sharp when certain distance is maintained from the screen. The display opens really wide up to full 180 degrees but this feature is let down by the screen's subpar viewing angles. Despite having a low capacity 3200 mAh 2 cell battery, the Lenovo 310 surprised me on battery runtime performance. It lasted close to 4 and half hours when used for web browsing or doing less demanding tasks. The battery runtime reduced to 2 hours and 45 minutes when watching 1080p videos full time. It took 2 hours and 20 minutes for charging the battery from 4 to 100 percent. My variant runs on Intel Core i3 6006U processor based on 6th generation Skylake architecture with 4 GB of DDR4 RAM. It operates at a maximum frequency of 2.0 GHz and performance on general tasks is mostly adequate. You will feel more satisfied by restricting yourself to web browsing with 5 to 10 tabs open, watching YouTube videos at 1080p or editing documents. But it dragged at times while multitasking heavily. Doing CPU intensive tasks like image rendering, video encoding on this laptop will leave you disappointed and I suggest laptops with iFi CPU. Playing Full HD videos is not an issue with this laptop, but it stutters terribly when running 4K videos or even 1080p video recorded at 60fps. The integrated HD 520 GPU is more suited for casual gaming and flash games and even it can handle popular games at low resolution with minimal details. Get back up to speed. We've got a corner coming up. Use your brakes this time to slow down the car and then turn into the corner smoothly. It offered 20 FPS in GTA 5 when played at 1024 by 800 resolution with details set to low. In Battlefield 1, it achieves 21 FPS again at low resolution and settings. An 
here are the scores achieved with this laptop CPU and hard drive from popular benchmark softwares. The laptop temperature remained well controlled under 65 degrees at full load which is very impressive. It does not get excessively warm at the bottom portion and it doesn't hurt my lap even after continuous heavy web surfing. The exhaust vents are placed above the keyboard area and the laptop expels hot air when at full load. The air intake vents are placed right here at the bottom panel and make sure you don't place the laptop on any soft surfaces as it effectively blocks these vents. Lenovo offers two separate maintenance hatches for accessing or upgrading the storage and memory from the user side. Taking these off involves a single screw for each hatch. There is a single unoccupied memory slot for future expansion which can hold up to 8GB of DDR4 RAM and that gives a 12GB maximum system memory. And you can see the pre-installed 4GB memory is soldered to the motherboard. You can also replace the 2.5 inch hard drive with a super fast solid state drive which in turn improves the system performance drastically. The battery is not user accessible and you need to perform full disassembly to access it. Well the IdeaPad 310 notebook satisfied me in many important aspects and I have no trouble in recommending this model to regular users and is quite suitable for both entertainment and office tasks. Despite having fewer drawbacks, the Lenovo IdeaPad 310 is far better than the IdeaPad 110 series, which I had reviewed earlier. I also included the video link of IP110 laptop review in the description section below. I suggest you to have a look at that video which will be more helpful for you to make the right buying decision between these two models. And here is my brief observation with the IdeaPad 310 compared to the 110 model. Thanks for watching, give a thumbs up if you find this video useful and also leave your thoughts queries in the comment section.